Buildings have evolved, so let's give them the attention they deserve. This is 10 Minutes to a Better Building, a podcast from the building experts at Boland. We're a building solutions provider with more than 350 professionals and 150 technicians with one goal in mind, to make your building better. Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of 10 Minutes to a Better Building, a podcast from Boland and your resource for improving your building. I'm Tyler Kern. I will be your host today and I'm thrilled to welcome Julie Wolfington. She's an energy and sustainability leader at Boland. Julie, it's great to talk to you. How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am excited about this conversation, Julie. 10 minutes to a better building. So let's dive in. We're discussing how building owners can have a better building, but Julie, what exactly does better actually mean? Great question. You know, people have asked me that before. They said, well, that's, that word sounds kind of obscure, right? Well, it's actually by design. So what we figured out over the years with our clients is that the one thing that really ties them all together and what we do for them is to make their building better. But why is that? Well, the reason for that is, is really because all of our clients' buildings are unique, but really more importantly, so are their business goals. So, you know, the recipe to a better building is is really different for each of our clients. So, you know, for example, if you're a commercial real estate company and you want to flip your building next month, your better building is one that costs you the very least amount of money right now. Uh, so your recipe for a better building might include a box of Band-Aids and some duct tape. Uh, you know, if you're a university and, you know, you're going to be around for many, many years and you own your buildings, your recipe for a better building will probably include or, or may include energy efficiency upgrades that lower the life cycle cost of your buildings. It's really up to what matters to that building owner, what's important to them. And that really dictates what better means to them. So it's all about your goals and what you are trying to achieve with your particular building. And that dictates what the solutions are in this case. But are are there steps that anybody can take, regardless of their goals, to have the better building that they are looking for? Yes, 100%. Um, I think that the first thing is exactly what you said. It's talking about business goals and communicating them across your organization. So, for example, you know, if you are that commercial real estate developer and you're going to flip your building next month, let your facilities folks know. They're the people who are making a lot of these decisions to, you know, regarding the facilities. There's no reason for them to build a project and bring you a project that has a five-year payback, for example, right? On the opposite end, if you let your facilities folks know and and other folks across your organization what your business goals are, it's, for example, say you let them know, hey, we're dying to build a new fitness center. We're really wanting to do that. And they say, okay, there's a lot of energy waste that's happening in this building. And maybe we could use that money to pay for a fitness center, right? Again, communicating those business goals across the organization is really important because it helps everybody get on the same page and work towards the same goals. The second thing is, is determine a building baseline. You know, if you want to make your building better, you got to know where you're starting from so that you can have that measuring stick to decide what is better. Okay, so if we're starting here, better looks like this. Now we can figure out a plan, you know, to get from baseline to better. The third step is make sure you evaluate all of the internal and external factors that affect your your building. And when I say internal and external factors, internal things are like your business goals, the, the current situation of the mechanical systems in your building or the lighting systems or the space usage, things like that. So the internal factors are all the things that you kind of have control over, right? The external factors are also really important. You know, where is your building located? If you're in Virginia versus DC, you know, there's different utility incentives. In other words, free money, which we all love in different areas. There's different codes, there's different clientele, there's different space usage, things like that. Again, considering your better building, take in, 
make sure and take into account, you know, those internal and external factors so that you can create that right recipe for you. You know, the next step, set your building goals accordingly. Again, you know, considering all of those factors and your baseline um, and what does better mean to you, set your goals. And then finally, developing that plan and that timeline to get from baseline to better. I love it. I, I, I love those steps and I love how they apply regardless of what uh, what a facility's goals are. Um, those those steps and, and what you laid out, I think, are incredibly valuable. And, and Julie, there's one question I've always wanted to ask someone with your expertise. And so this feels like a good time, but it, it seems like a no brainer to me that all buildings should be energy efficient, right? There, there are so many different benefits. Why aren't all buildings energy efficient these days? <laughs> That's another great question. Um, and that one will take longer than we have to really give you the full effect, but I'm going to hit a couple of highlights of what I've experienced in, in my 20 years in the business because, Tyler, I have asked myself that question so many times because it just doesn't make sense to me. You know, when a building is energy efficient, the, the building owner is saving money. It's the building is running better. If it's energy efficient, that means it's tuned well. It's probably more comfortable for the occupants. The building owner can can brag and market about how their building is energy efficient because that is a real thing right now. People are obviously concerned about climate change and things like that. And, you know, it's the right thing to do, right? But here's the thing. It really goes back to what we talked about just a few minutes ago, which is what are the building owner's goals? And the fact that many times with making buildings more energy efficient, there's a lack of a compelling event, right? So when something breaks in a building, say, for example, the air conditioning breaks, you know, people freak out, they don't want to be hot, they fix it. When a building is energy inefficient, it's working. It's just not working that well, right? Mm, so, right. you know, the lack of compelling event is is a real thing. You know, what we try to do for our building owners is we try to think of what matters to them. You know, if it's that fitness center, okay, great. That's my compelling event. Now, I know that that building is very energy efficient. So I'm going to formulate an energy efficiency project around saving enough money to over time to get the owner that fitness center because I know that that's what's important to them. And that's the beauty of energy efficiency is that most buildings have the money. They're just paying the money to the utility company when they should be paying it to themselves or we want them to pay it to themselves. You know, I think the biggest thing is creating that or helping the building owner find that compelling event to make make a project or make a change happen in the building, offering them an easy button because energy efficiency can be complex. So offering them an easy button, you know, working with a partner who understands the complexities of the building and knows the building um, to make it easy for them. And then also understanding the financial side, presenting a financial case that speaks to them. Not all CFOs or purchasing folks have the same measuring sticks for, for projects and things, right? So figuring out what language they use, what resonates with them, and presenting an energy efficiency project in, in the way that speaks to them and meets their own unique criteria. Hopefully, those are some of the barriers that, that I've learned over the years and some of the solutions to get past them. Because at the end of the day, I think we can all agree, hopefully, <laughs> that energy efficiency is a really good thing that benefits the building owner, you know, as well as communities and our environment. 100%. Julie Wolfington, Energy and Sustainability Leader at Boland. Julie, thank you so much for joining me today here on the inaugural episode of 10 Minutes to a Better Building. Thanks so much, Tyler. And everyone, stay tuned for upcoming episodes of 10 Minutes to a Better Building and make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and Spotify to stay up to date with the latest from Boland on how you can have a better building, whatever that means to you. And of course, we'll be back soon with more episodes. But until then, I've been your host today, Tyler Kern. Thanks for listening.